All right, so by now we are definitely into the harder questions for this module. It's still the first module, but they're hard. And I would go right to Desmos here. I know how to solve stuff like this and, and it's not that time consuming, but why risk it, right? So here I'd pull out my Desmos. In this case, I already put the equation in there for you. Now you might remember that normally, um, absolute value equations make those kind of V shapes, right? They kind of bounce somewhere. But that's not gonna happen here because this is not a Y equals equation, right? This equation only has the one variable. So what Desmos is gonna do is it's gonna solve this equation for us and it's gonna give us the solutions in the form of vertical lines. So you can see one of them is just on the edge of my calculator there. It looks like negative 10 and, oh, nope, it's not negative 10. But see, the thing is, here, I'm trying to tap it. You can't see that I'm tapping it, but I'm tapping it on my iPad and it's not tapping the point and telling me the number. And that's because of the way that Desmos works on the back end with things like radicals and absolute value. It, it basically, there's probably some dividing by zero that prevents it from letting you have a point here, but we can zoom, right? And if we zoom in, we can see this is very clearly negative nine, right? So that's one of the solutions. But when it says some of the solutions, we know there's going to be two. So we got to find the other, right? So let's zoom out, zoom out and oh, there it is. Right, so if I zoom into that, it's somewhere between 25 and 30, 26, okay, it's exactly at 27, right? So not negative nine plus 27 is the same as 27 minus nine, so that gives us our answer of 18. So that's it, 18 is the answer. So again, I wouldn't have bothered here to solve it um, uh, algebraically, I can show you how to do that because maybe there will be a situation where you can't put it in Desmos, but we're at question 17 out of 22. We know they're getting hard. At this point, you might also know what your timing situation is. So especially if you get a lot of time, like, yeah, you could do it the hard way. You could do it the long way. But like, then I would still be checking it in Desmos to just make sure. Um, but if you are in any way bad at algebra, you've got to be going right to the calculator here. It's going to be so much better than you will be at dealing with this algebra. So let's see what it would look like. So zooming in again, we've got uh, the absolute value of x minus 9 plus 45 is equal to 63. So at first we just treat this like a normal equation. We're going to subtract the 45. Think of the x minus 9, those absolute value bars, think of them as just parentheses, right? We can't break into those parentheses until we've dealt with the stuff around it. So we're going to have x minus 9 and that's equal to 63 minus 45 uh, is 18, yeah. <clears throat> Now, I know 18 ends up being our answer, and maybe there's some mathematical reason for that. I didn't quite think that through. But technically, what we're supposed to do if we have absolute values is to create two equations. So one of them is very, very simple. Just drop the absolute value bars, and that's that. Solve. So x minus 9, x minus 9 is equal to 18, so add the 9 to both sides, and x is 27. And that's one of the solutions we found. For the other, we have to remember what absolute value bars do, right? If x minus 9 were negative 18, then the absolute value bars would wipe away the negative and make it positive, right? So we have to account for that. And so that just means we take our x minus 9 and we make it equal to negative 18, the other value that would have produced a positive 18 from these absolute value bars. So now when we add the 9 to both sides, we get x is equal to negative 9. And those are our two solutions. And again, the sum would still be the same. The sum is 18, right? So not super time consuming, but you can see there's there's places we can go wrong. There's negatives flying around. Absolute value has this property where we do need to kind of make two equations. And so there's just lots of things that could go wrong. Not really though on the calculator, right? If, as long as you enter it in the calculator correctly, you're gonna get the question right. You just gotta be able to scroll. But do recognize that yes, occasionally when you put things in Desmos, like I did here, it's not gonna tap. And you can maybe hear me tapping. It's not letting me tap the point and know for sure. So if this were like 27.003, I might not know that unless I zoom in really, really close. But it's not gonna happen here. You can tell there's no reason for there to be a decimal, like the numbers are all divisible by nine. It's gonna work out. Um, but yeah, I would go to Desmos here, no, no doubt. I know how to solve it, but why bother? Save my brain power for the hard stuff.